Hey everyone, how's it going? So if you've been on my channel, you've noticed that I've had not just the 52 pre-evolved Pokemon that I'm trying to rank against each other, but I've also started ranking unofficially some of the very best Pokemon. And ever since I did my first video on Mewtwo, a lot of people, a lot of people, have said that Gengar would be even faster. Now I kind of get where this is coming from. Ghastly, by far, is the best pre-evolved Pokemon. In fact, Ghastly is better than some fully evolved Pokemon. And since Gengar is a better Ghastly, it should be the best fully evolved Pokemon, maybe even better than Mewtwo. Well, will it work out that way? Let's find out. The first issue though, that I'm gonna say right off the bat, is that unlike Mewtwo that starts off with Psychic, the best attacking move in all of Generation 1, in my opinion, Gengar starts off with the exact same moveset as Ghastly, which if you remember, is Nightshade, Lick, and Confuse Ray. Now, it's not like Nightshade isn't useful. It hits every single Pokemon, despite the fact it's a Ghost-type move, and it does your level as damage. However, when we're at really small levels, like level 5 or level 6, it can take several hits to knock out Pokemon. In addition, Gengar's stats, while good, aren't quite Mewtwo's, not even close. And this is on full display when we get to Brock. I mean, the Geodude, you see the Nightshade problem, it's taking way more hits than Psychic did, but the Onix we actually lose to our first time. I mean, it's kind of unlucky. Bide turn 1, like Nightshade, despite the fact Bide's a normal move, it ignores immunity, and the Confuse Ray, I don't get the hidden confusion, so I'm knocked out. Sorry, one second, this is an edit point, because this is future Jaros here. How the heck did that happen? Like, let's take a look at that again. We're at level 9, so Nightshade would do exactly 9 damage. And so Bide should deal exactly 18 damage. How the heck does that knock me out? That doesn't even make sense. Is it because of the Confuse Ray? Like, no, seriously, I think I know a lot about Red and Blue, but I'm literally stumped as to what just happened. Anyway, back to the video. I do win my second time, and the strategy is just use Nightshade, but all these extra turns, they're really starting to add up. And when you compare side-by-side side Mewtwo and Gengar, Gengar is definitely starting to lose quite a bit of time. Once we get to Cerulean, battling Misty I thought would be a mistake, because Starmie's Bubble Beam will still do very good damage, so I go to battle rival number two, and the truth is, rival number two isn't too difficult. Thankfully, I didn't get a single sand attack from Pidgeotto, and that's really the only thing that's a challenge. Otherwise, once again, just use Nightshade. And here's where I'm going to talk about another issue with Gengar. Yes, a third issue. Mewtwo, in addition to Psychic, had Confusion. And while Confusion is almost half as good as Psychic is, it does have 24 power points, way more than Nightshade's 15, which at this point deals less damage anyway. And unfortunately, until we beat Lieutenant Surge, we will not get another attacking move, unless we want to take an extra battle, which I really don't. So, we're stuck making trips back to the Pokemon Center, and eventually, once we get done with the routes to Bill's house, we can battle Misty, and I'll admit Misty may have been a little lucky, but it was a first try victory. I just used Nightshade. The reason I say it was lucky is that Starmie never used Bubble Beam. Then again, I had a lot of health left, so it definitely could have used Bubble Beam once. Twice it might have been close, but hey, we won. So let's move on to rival number three, and pretty much the same thing as rival number two. The big difference is now Kadabra can use Confusion. However, when that does happen, you'll notice it doesn't do very much damage at all. Speaking of which, you might notice I switched to Lick on War Turtle, and yes, it wastes time, or does it? Because if I want to get my power points back for Nightshade, and I already use the Ether you pick up by Bill's house, then I'd need to heal in the Pokemon Center, and then I can't dig back to Cerulean, so I'd have to walk back, and that would waste a ton of time. So I'll waste the little bit of time it takes to use a couple more Licks, and so I have the Nightshades ready for our next battle, Lieutenant Surge, who actually did give me problems. I didn't heal, like I said before, and I didn't use my potions at first, and what you'll notice is that Voltorb's Sonic Boom also ignores type immunities. 
And I'm not really sure if this is an intended mechanic, a glitch, or an oversight. Either way, it's a thing that Generation 1 has, and it took me quite a few attempts, I think four, in order to finally get past Surge. Essentially, what I figured I need to do is use my Nightshades on the Voltorb, Pikachu was weak enough that I could use Lick, and the big thing was Pikachu was using Thunder Wave, giving Raichu just one more opportunity to knock me out, if Raichu uses Thunder Shock, it's not a big deal, but Thunderbolt does decent damage. I also needed to heal before the fight with my potions, but if I heal and don't get a Thunder Wave, I was able to get past Lieutenant Surge, and finally, Gengar gets an attacking move that does quite a bit more damage, Thunderbolt. And that speeds up battles tremendously, because even though Thunderbolt is in same type, it at least is a 95 base power special move, Gengar has exceptional special, However, we're not actually going to have to use Thunderbolt for that long because we're going to get to Celadon and the order usually goes Giovanni, Shopping, Fly, Lavender, back to Erica. We're going to switch that up. Psychic is the best move in the game, so we're actually going to go to Shop first. We're only going to buy one thing, the Freshwater, go to Saffron, go to Mr. Psychic, get Psychic, and now we can do Giovanni. And, uh, yeah, he's not too bad. We have one, two, three, three psychics! <laughs> yeah, I busted out the count impression early. But, yeah, it really is that easy. You might also notice I get a lot of critical hits. Critical hits, as I've mentioned before, are based on speed. Gengar is really good speed, so I believe it gets a critical hit around 20% of the time. Pretty good. Anyway, here's where I make a slight error. I thought with Psychic, I would for sure beat Erica easily. That wasn't actually the case. I actually, well, I didn't lose, but I actually had to reset against her once. And the reason being is Sleep Powder. You see, Psychic, I do outspeed, but Psychic is not a one-hit KO. And that's true of all three of her Pokemon. And Vileplume and Victory Bell both know Sleep Powder, and Sleep takes a very very long time in generation one we're trying to beat Mewtwo so unfortunately because I'd already saved in front of Erica I couldn't just go back that would waste even more time so if I were doing this again I would have gone to Lavender first I just thought it would be easier to finish off Celadon and that it would save a little bit of backtracking but in the end that was a mistake listen it's not like Erica was difficult I would have beaten her the first time I just wanted to go faster and I did in fact beat her the second time. Her Razor Leaf did nothing as you saw, so she really wasn't an issue, more a minor inconvenience. Speaking of which, rival number four, typically very easy, but this time, the reason I picked Blastoise by the way as my rival starter, is that gives him two, two Psychic Pokemon. Uh, uh, mm. But yeah, I mean Psychic Pokemon are very annoying, especially Execute, because my best moves are Thunderbolt and Psychic, both of which are resisted by Execute. And Execute knows Hypnosis, so this battle could theoretically be tedious and annoying. It wasn't. Because I'm at such a high level, for now the battle is fine. But going forward, I expect Execute plus Alakazam to be very, very not fun. But we have such a long ways to go before then, right? <laughs> no, no, we're almost there. I mean... Yeah, there are a few more trainers we need to beat, but none of them are particularly difficult. We can skip every single trainer on Cycling Road, go through the Safari Zone, no trainers there, and so the next thing we're going to do is defeat Koga. And the hardest part about Koga is not Koga at all, it's Koga's gym. I actually didn't get too bad luck, but the Drowsies and especially the Hypno, the trainer right before Koga, that juggler, I was nervous about. And this is where you're going to see the only advantage Gengar has over Mewtwo, literally the only one. I have a sleep move, Hypnosis. And yes, it's only 60% accurate, so potentially not the best idea for the Elite Four where I want consistency, but for now, it's a good way to get rid of the juggler's Pokemon. And yeah, I guess I should show Koga's battle. I mean, Psychic. Oh, that didn't one hit KO? All right, well, none of the Pokemon can really do anything to me. They only have poison moves, and they have normal moves, and I guess they can make me miss enough that I use struggle, but like, come on, that's not gonna happen, and it didn't happen. 
and I got a critical hit against the Weezing. That may have been a 2 hit KO, I have no idea. Frankly, I don't care. Because we're about to battle Rival Fievel. Remember I said it wasn't so far away? Well, we're here. I gotta deal with an Execute and an Alakazam. Let's do it. Alright, Thunderbolt is, without a critical hit, one-shotting Pidgeot. That's good. But here's where Gengar being a Ghost type is a disadvantage. We have actually had some advantages that I've kind of talked about. But it doesn't get the same type attack bonus. Growlithe survives. Ember does very little. But Gengar not being a Psychic type is costing just a little bit more time. Execute can be trolly, so I'm going to troll it first. Go for Hypnosis. That's good. It stays asleep. And I use Nightshade. Nightshade. Psychic? Maybe I shouldn't have wasted that. Whatever. Didn't end up mattering. Because I go for Thunderbolt. It's not even doing half to Alakazam. Psybeam's not doing too much. But I'm like, alright, you know what? This is too risky. Go for Hypnosis. 60% means 40% miss. We miss. Critical hit. Yay. So, that's something we're going to have to deal with. Alright, let's try this again. Thunderbolt the Pidgeot. Very good. Growlithe, Psychic. Okay, we got a crit. That's good. Nightshade. Ah, alright. Well, that's going to be slow. Let's try again. Again. Thunderbolt. Very good. Psychic. We're getting those special drops. By the way, 33% chance of that happening. And, alright, we're good. Now I'm going to put you to sleep. Very good. And hey, another special drop and a crit. Don't think that crit mattered. Are we going to put Alakazam to sleep? We do. Very good. Now I'm curious if Nightshade will do more damage. Fun fact, Ghost, even though there's only one attacking move, Lick, it doesn't affect Psychic Pokemon. What the heck, Gen 1? Nightshade ignores immunities anyway, and truth be told, Thunderbolt is the better play with my critical hit chance because it has a better chance of being a 2-hit KO. Didn't matter. Alakazam stayed to sleep. And there is literally nothing Blastoise can do. Thunderbolt comes close to 1-hit KOing, but yeah, withdraw. Very good. Anyway, we beat Rival Fievel. That took a few attempts. And that's not a great sign, considering he's the trainer we have to battle two more times, including the final battle. But we'll deal with that in a while. I mean, not that long, considering how much video is left, but like, you know, a while enough. We can talk about other things. Like the Giovanni battle. Just one hit KO after one hit KO. Oh. Oh. Well, I mean, it didn't matter, but like, oh. And this is why I doubt Gengar will be able to beat Mewtwo. Again, that 50% boost you get by using moves of the same type. I just don't think, despite Gengar's amazing stats, I don't think it's going to be able to keep up. And before you guys already anticipate, yes, I'll try it with Alakazam, but the one advantage I'll say right now that Gengar has that we'll talk about, not next gym, we're actually going to go to Blaine first, because Blaine will boost our special, which should help for Sabrina, but we're going to use Thunderbolt against Sabrina. Alakazam lacks another good special move. In fact, only has Psychic-type special moves, unless I resort to Mimic. So, that's going to be a problem, but hey, that's another video. Let's finish one video at a time, and like I said, we're about to battle Blaine. Yes, Blaine is a 7th gym leader, but I'm weak to Psychic, and I want that special boost like I said. And was Blaine very difficult? Well, here's a fun little fact. Blaine has what's called good AI, and Growlithe has agility. Agility is a Psychic move. Gengar has poison typing. Psychic? Strong against poison. So use agility. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's not like Growlithe would have done much of anything. Anyway, Ponyta is going to be a 2 hit KO, and of course, Fire Spin. Why use a move that won't waste a ton of time? Thankfully, it only lasts two turns. Knock out the Ponyta. Might be a 2 hit KO on Rapidash, and of course... Oh, okay, it missed. That's good. And we knock it out. Hooray. Now we have to deal with our Canine, and wow, Canine's bulky. Thankfully, Ember doesn't do much. I mean, it could have gone for Fire Blast, and I get a critical hit, and then... He gets a critical hit, I guess that's fair, but yeah, Fire Blast would have been kind of scary. Thankfully, he doesn't use it. We knock it out. A little bit of luck here, but you know what? We'll take it. And now we only have two gyms to go, and for those of you wondering how this compares to Mewtwo time-wise, we're going to be at 2 hours 37 minutes saving in front of Sabrina. Meanwhile, Mewtwo we saved at 2 hours 33 minutes in front of Rival 6. So, it doesn't look like it's going to be that close in the end. But who knows, maybe Gengar will make a late charge. 
I mean, if you remember the Mewtwo video, the Elite Four wasn't easy because Mewtwo had a hard time leveling up since it is in the slow level up group, so that is another advantage Gengar has. Anyway, I'm stalling because I really don't want to talk about this battle. I anticipated spending five minutes to half an hour trying to beat Sabrina. Let's see if that's accurate. Battle number one, crit with Thunderbolt. That's looking good, but it doesn't knock out Kadabra. That's bad. And uh, Psychic, that's bad, but no special drop. That's good. All right, Mr. Mime is doing three quarters. That's very good. Light Screen, very good as well. All right, down goes Mr. Mime. Venomoth is a poison Pokemon. Not really sure why Sabrina uses it, but okay. Now we just have the worst Pokemon we could possibly face, Alakazam. Well, let's put it to sleep and oh, we hit. We may have won. Yeah, we definitely won because it can't attack the turn it wakes up. All right, well, okay. First try victory, total skill, no luck involved, best strategy ever, j Rose 11, Pokemon Challenge Champion. We can just end the video right here. What's that? You want to see Giovanni? Okay, Giovanni was somewhat interesting, I guess. We're about 13 minutes behind Mewtwo at this point, which considering everything is really good, but unless we have the quickest Elite Four battle on record, we're not going to catch it. But hey, still have to beat two more trainers before then. All right, Psychic won a KO's Rhyhorn, but it was a crit, so I don't know if it would have without it. And it does not one a KO Dugtrio with that pathetic HP. Yeah, I don't think it would have one hit KO Rhyhorn either. And it goes for Dig. This may knock me out. Dig is base 100 power in this generation. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. So we're knocking out Dugtrio. Now just no more. Actually, none of them know Earthquake, so we're pretty good. Want to KO? No. I mean, it goes for Body Slam. The only move it has that literally could hit me is Poison Sting. Doing these runs in yellow would have been so much better in retrospect, but hey, these are the iconic originals. Anyway, Nidoking only has one move that can affect me, Poison Sting, and I get a crit anyway, so whatever. And Rhydon has one move that could theoretically affect me, Fissure, which won't because I outspeed. And that's how Winnikeo moves work. So that's Giovanni. Clap, we did it. Hooray. But we have five more trainers to go. Well, six battles, but five trainers, I was right. And Rival 6 would have been an amazing battle to switch Nightshade for Mimic and set up the badge boost glitch. But that would have taken up a ton of time. So no badge boost glitch this entire run. I know what is going on here. But yeah, I mean, what's more to say? Rival 6. All right, Thunderbolt does one-shot Pidgeot, albeit I got a critical hit, so I have no idea if it would have otherwise. All right, well, at least we'll know if we can one-shot Rhyhorn without a critical hit. Or not. All right, two for two. <laughs> not bad. Can we make it three? No, but Growlithe has agility, psychic move, good AI. So it won't attack me, and that is three down. All right, I'm not making the same mistake versus execute I did the time before. Put it to sleep. Okay, very good. Now I'm going to use Psychic, Special Drop, very good. But it wakes up, that's less good. However, this could knock it out, which would be very good. It doesn't. But the rival uses a Retroactive Potion. After Fire Red and Leaf Green, do I miss the Retroactive Potions? So we get a very Gen 1 knockout of Execute. All right, put Alakazam to sleep, good. Wake up the very first turn, less good. Put it to sleep again. All right, three for three, this is looking good. And it stayed asleep, hey. Oh, and it's a Speed Tie, and it woke up, beautiful. What more could go wrong? So, and Thunderbolt's not doing much damage? This is amazing. All right, well, now it's outspeeding me because it is a speed tie. It's just a 50-50 coin flip. At least it went for Reflect, literally the worst move it could have used. I go for Thunderbolt. Please outspeed it. Of course I don't. And Side Beam, I'm going to lose. Oh, I don't. Okay. And I knock it out. That's good. But we may have problems with Blastoise. It does no Hydro Pump, which it can use if I don't want to KO, which I do. Man, I love Gen 1. To be fair though, to be fair, that's still absurdly lucky. It's a 22% chance, three critical hits in a single battle. That was, that was pretty good. Anyway, there's really not much more to say before we get to the Elite Four. So why say anything? Here's the Elite Four. This is my first attempt. Not really sure what I'm going to do, but I mean, I'm at minimum battle, so I'm not going to battle anyone. So let's battle Lorely. Anyway, will I want to KO Dugong? Yes, with the crit. So I probably wouldn't have, I don't know. We'll find out Cloyster is much worse special though. And so if I don't want to KO Cloyster, which I don't, we wouldn't want to KO the Dugong. Aurora Beam thankfully doesn't have Ice Beam in this generation. 
And with its bad special and my great special, it does pretty much nothing. Alright, alright, so far so good. And it's gonna get better because Slowbro only has one attacking move, Water Gun. Yeah, Gen 1 is weird. Anyway, it's not gonna attack me because it has psychic status moves like Amnesia. So it's gonna use that very good opportunity to use Badge Boost Glitch if I'd gotten Mimic, which I didn't. So we're just gonna knock out Slowbro and that means Jinx may be annoying. I go for Hypnosis, it misses, Ice Punch is doing kinda decent damage, but I hit the second Hypnosis. Now, I have no idea why I opt to go for Nightshade, even when it doesn't do much damage, Thunderbolt probably would've done more, but I stick to it. Well, Jinx wakes up, and I'm still sticking to Nightshade, it goes for Ice Punch, and I'm at 30 HP, with the Lapras coming. Alright, looks like we're gonna have to do this one again, unless I can hit the Hail Mary Hypnosis! Hey! Thunderbolt, not waking up. Thunderbolt knocks it out, no, but Retroactive Super Potion and it doesn't wake up. We won, yay! I mean, let's be honest, I didn't exactly play that battle particularly well, but a win is a win, and hey, we're probably gonna have to do it again anyway, so whatever. Let's move on to Bruno. Bruno, is he gonna be just as easy as always? Is the Count Von Count ready for his second appearance in a video? One Psychic? Two Psychics? Three Psychics? Four Psychics? Alright, this one's not gonna- Oh! Critical hit five! Five Psychics! <laughs> okay, wow, that, that, that was certainly something. I mean, I don't think I knock out Machamp with a single Psychic if it doesn't crit. But, hey, 22% chance, five Pokemon. So you can't claim it got extraordinary luck, but... Now that we've beaten Bruno, we get to do our favorite part of the Elite Four. Step right up to the Agatha Lottery! Will she use Confuse Ray or Hypnosis? Will you outspeed, like, 10 levels lower than her? Probably not, but let's find out. Alright, we do outspeed, which is good, and we get a special drop, which doesn't really matter, because it would be a 2 KO. Dream Eater, though, is very, very good. Agatha attacks randomly, so that was just a 1-4 chance. Literally the best luck we could get, one down. Now, I'm thinking I'm going to one-shot... Oh! Okay. Excuse me, Golbat, but Wing Attack does nothing, so we knock it out. Now I'm hoping Haunter will be a 1 to KO, no, and Nightshade. Okay, finally, Agatha doing, well, good enough damage that if I get one Nightshade from Gengar, I lose, so that's fantastic. Alright, well, Arbok has horrible special, so I should 1 to KO this thing. Finally, a 1 to KO, hooray! I'm super effective against everything, and I can't get a 1 to KO. Now I just need Gengar not to use Nightshade, and I win. Never mind, I level up, I should win anyway. Let's go for Hypnosis just to be safe. Oh, no, j you have to press the cursor twice to use Hypnosis. Thankfully, she goes for Dream Eater, so that was good. And now maybe just go for Psychic? What's that me in the past? You want to tempt fate? Okay, let's go for Hypnosis, this isn't going to backfire. Oh, it, it doesn't. Okay, well that was unnecessary, because Psychic's going to knock it. Oh, okay, it didn't. Maybe that was necessary. Retroactive Super Potion, one more Psychic. And we're at Lance. Kind of a very strange first try through the Elite Four, but so far it's been quite effective. However, Lance looks scary. We have three Dragon Pokemon and an Aerodactyl. How am I going to deal with it? Well, I actually can't lose to Lance. You see, for one... Gyarados is quadruple weak to Thunderbolt, and I got a crit. I don't even think that crit came close to mattering, but that was not one I was worried about. The Dragonair and the Dragonite have barrier and agility. Psychic moves, good AI, poison Pokemon, they will never attack. Thus, you can beat Lance's Dragonairs and Dragonite with any poison Pokemon, level 1 even. So long as it can damage them with Toxic or something, you're good. Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl. It outspeeds, which is bad, hits me supersonic, which is bad, but then you realize I hit myself in confusion and only do 20 damage, and the only move it has to damage a ghost Pokemon is supersonic, and that's indirect anyway. And that's why he keeps spamming it, even though I'm already confused, and of course I snap out of confusion. It doesn't want to KO, Lance heals, but looks like it was a range. Aerodactyl's knocked out, and that's the battle. Dragonite isn't going to attack me, it's just simply a matter of dealing enough damage and hoping Lance doesn't heal and wasting more of my time. But, yeah. Gen 1's gonna Gen 1 sometimes, and uh, this run, if nothing else, is peak Generation 1. 
And it might sound like I'm hating on the games, but I love them. They're unique. You work around these quirks. It's a ton of fun. It's part of the game. I wouldn't be playing so many of these solo runs if I didn't genuinely enjoy every single playthrough. And they are probably my favorite playthroughs. They're quick. You have very limited options. And I'm rambling because I'm nervous about the final battle. All right, you got me. Yes, I'm nervous. I haven't done well against the rival. We've had such a crazy run. I want to end it here, but I know how unlikely that is. And so I'm going to use my rare candies. You collect a lot of them that are just easily accessible. I could collect a lot more. I skipped ones that were out of my way, including the one in Mount Moon. I don't know if I could beat Mewtwo, but I think I could come in second if I have a good battle. So let's do it. Cue the final battle music. All right, first things first, will I want to kill Pidgeot? Yes. Good start, but that was the easiest Pokemon. All right, this Alakazam is scary. I got to hit with Hypnosis. Oh, Reflect. Okay, okay. I got another opportunity. And capitalize on it. It's asleep. Stay asleep. No, that is not what I asked you to do. Stay asleep. Okay, hit again. Okay, stay asleep. Okay, okay. Now get a crit. All right, fine. Decent damage. All right, it's staying asleep too. We, we could do this. A crit here would seal the deal. Don't get it. Now, please don't heal. Oh, actually, I go first. It's Gen 1. I don't have to worry about a potion. Take that, Alakazam. All right, all right. That was the scariest Pokemon, but by no means is victory assured. I mean, Rhydon literally can't attack me. It only has normal moves, so critical hit didn't matter. In fact, thinking back, I should have just stalled with Thunderbolt and gotten some badge boost glitch via Leer and Tail Whip. That would have been like... 8,000 IQ galaxy brain strats, but unfortunately, that just occurred to me right now, and now is not then. And speaking of the past and present being different, this Arcanine doesn't know Fire Blast, so I am not concerned, and yeah, that Ember did all of 11 damage, and I just knocked it out. Okay, okay. One Pokemon left after Executor, which can't attack me, in no Stomp, Barrage, and Hypnosis, please don't, okay. Well, I just have to hit Executor before it hits me. All right, well, now I just have to wake up. It literally can't attack, and finally, I wake up, hit it with Hypnosis, have to go for Nightshade, and of course, I don't use Hypnosis again, and it puts me back to sleep, and I'm asleep for three, four. All right, fifth turn, I wake up. Please don't put me to sleep. Thank God it missed. All right, now, final Pokemon. It's level 65. It has Hydro Pump, but I could want to KO. I don't know. Let's do it. What a KO! No! Hydro! Okay, miss! Yes, we did it! <laughs> first try Elite Four victory! I think that's my first time ever! Even Mewtwo took much longer. In fact, in terms of how long it took me to record the video, this was just three real minutes, and yes, I do use speed up, so it was three real minutes slower. And actually, that translates kind of accurately, even though Mewtwo spent 15 real-time minutes in the Elite Four, Gengar beats all three of the legendary birds, unfortunately, just falls short of Mewtwo, a mere quarter of an hour different, and I think that just goes to show you how amazing Mewtwo is, this was a great run, tons of fun, crazy stuff, but at the end of the day, will anything be able to dethrone Mewtwo as the Gen 1 King? I don't think so, but we'll keep trying. Thanks everyone for watching the video, take care.